Hello, everybody. Give me a second as I post and pin today's very special program. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Ask an Athlete Ambassador Live. Happy Wednesday. I We have a very special Ask an Athlete Ambassador today. We are welcoming a very special guest for a very special edition of Ask an Athlete Ambassador. It is in honor of our Sports for Life program co-founded with ESPN in 2014. The program was created with the understanding that based on the knowledge that while sports participation offers tremendous amount of lifelong benefits, young girls of color are disproportionately excluded. The program seeks to increase the participation and retention of African American and Hispanic girls ages 11 through 18 in developmental youth sports program. Now, we are so lucky today because to help us celebrate is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. If you are watching at home, I need you to do a virtual drum roll, please, because I have to read my notes. Her list of accomplishments are so long, it's exceptional. She is a four-time Olympic gold medalist, a WNBA champion, a WNBA finals MVP, a 10-time WNBA all-star, a five-time defensive player of the year, WNBA all-time leading scorer in steals, what? A WNBA playoffs all-time leading scorer, WNBA playoffs, all-time leading rebounder, a sports commentator, a business owner, general manager of the Indiana Fever, her legacy team. Get ready for this. 2020 Women's Basketball Hall of Fame inductee, 2020 Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. You've watched her, her career wearing the number 24. Joining us live is the one, the only, Tamika Catchings. And I'm gonna get Tamika right now. Give me a second. I'm gonna have to find Tamika really quickly. All right. Hello, Tamika. <laughs> great to see you. How are you? I am great. How are you? Thanks you for having Indiana, me. You are an Indiana Fever caller year. You are good to go. I am all in, all in, all day, every day. I don't know if you heard me um, do your introduction, but your list of accomplishments are so long. Are you ever in awe of like all the things that you have accomplished in your lifetime when you hear other people say what you've done? I just try to like tune out for a second and then I come back when we rejoin. <laughs> <laughs> You're too humble. <laughs> You're way too humble. Well, thank you for joining us today. As you know, you are joining us for a very, very special edition of Ask an Athlete Ambassador. We are celebrating our Sports for Life program co-founded with ESPNW in 2014. And again, the program is to seeks to increase the participation of African American and Hispanic girls ages 11 through six, or 11 through 18 in sports development programs. And you are just an amazing ambassador yourself and a role model. So we are lucky to have you here talking with everybody. But before we get into it, you're in a very special location, are you? Do you mind setting the scene and telling people where you are? Well, I uh, happened to just mosey down the street. No, actually, I drove down here. I'm at Teach Me Cafe. This is, I brought the place in February 2017. And while we are not open to the general public as far as coming in, we are still doing curbside. So I came in yesterday. I actually came in. I had my fever mask. 
and I was doing curbside delivery, so that was a lot of fun. But I, I do, I love the space and just coming. So I bought my computer, had a couple of interviews I had to do today, and I just, I'm just posted up, and it's an amazing place. I love tea. I love tea too. First of all, it's amazing to hear that you are still serving your community during this time and being there with your community. Fun fact, I actually, one of my favorite jobs I ever had, I, I worked in college at a tea, at a tea shop called the Tea Spot. I have a very deep love and knowledge for tea. Do you have a favorite tea of yours? Because I have a favorite tea. Oh, my. So I am in the green family and I'm looking, I would turn and show you guys maybe later, but I am in the green family. So Tropical Cyclone is one of my favorite teas, but actually, and I've been sipping on this all day, but I am drink, drinking pomegranate blueberry. Oh, nice. So yeah, this is a nice little ice mixture. I actually love more hot tea, but I cannot turn down a free glass of iced tea, right? Mm. Seasonal. No. Seasonal tea. <laughs> Definitely. <Yeah. laughs> well, in your honor, my favorite tea is Gemaicha. It is a Japanese green tea mm -hmm. with some toasted rice. Steep it for a couple of minutes. It's amazing. Every morning. Just rice. It's toasted rice. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> just, just rice. Yeah, just, just rice. toasted rice. Okay. That's, All that's right. We'll rice. take it. Tea and rice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we have some folks joining from home. If you are just tuning in, Thank you for joining us, Tamika. This is how this is going to work. I have some great questions from you today based upon sport, fun, relevant. We also have some questions that were pre-prepared from today's Sports for Life featured community partners. These are questions from girls and coaches from today's community partners. So awesome. we'll be getting to those later. And we'll be taking some questions from our live viewers. So if you are watching and you have questions for Tamika, I see some OMGs coming in. <laughs> Start submitting those questions. We will get to them later. And at the end, I'm going to challenge you to your favorite home activity. I know you're not home right now, but most of us are, and we're trying to stay fit. So uh, we're going to get some advice from you. Does that sound good? Awesome. Let's do it. All right. Sounds great. So as I said, we have a very special, a very special program today honoring our, our programmatic work that is really geared towards increasing the retention of African American and Hispanic girls to stay in sports. You are such an incredible role model. And in fact, you served on the Women's Sports Foundation Board of Trustees. So you know our motto, you have to see it to be it, you know? Yep. What can you talk about the importance of being a young uh, role model to young girls, especially girls of color, and how important that is? Well, I think it's really important. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, not just uh, not just the women of color, but I was born with a hearing disability as well. So mm -hmm. being able to kind of hit a lot of different target audiences. But I think it's really important for young girls. For me, when I think about growing up and the people that I looked up to, my father played in the NBA. And so he was the first example that I had of somebody that I wanted to, to be like. But eventually, as I started watching and, you know, got to know Pat Summit and learn about uh, Tennessee Lady Vols when I was in eighth grade. And then, of course, the Olympic team, the 96 Olympic team was the first time I really had a chance. Yeah. <laughs> and watching Dawn, Dawn and Cheryl and Lisa, I mean, those three were the three that I was locked in on and that for me, I wanted to be like them when I grew up. And so, you know, being able to have somebody that you can look up to, whether it's in sports or whether it's a doctor or a teacher or, you know, I, I there's so many different avenues of that our young ladies can go, young ladies and young boys can go into. And, you know, I think it's really just important to find somebody that fits into whatever it is that you want to do and what you want to be. Yeah, you mentioned such a, a number of such incredible things. For one, you wear multiple hats. I mean, you are a leader and such, so successful on the court, but you are a business owner. You are in the front office of the Indiana Fever now. You're, you're, an, you're an executive. You have sat on boards. You've started your own foundation. You, know, you do so many things to show all the ways that you could be a leader um, you know, in society. And would you say that sports played a role in helping you become a leader and find the confidence to do all of these other things in your life? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I go back to just, I mean, I was born with a hearing disability. So for me, I got made fun of and bullied early on in my career and just early on as a little girl. And sports gave me confidence where I knew, like, if I could just practice and work so, so hard, people couldn't make fun of me. And you might beat me once, you might beat me twice, but I, it's very rare you're going to beat me three times. And it was just more so because I, it gave me a, 
you know, my faith was huge, but for sports, it gave me a, a purpose and it gave me something to drive and thrive and, and to be great at, right? Yeah. So I just remember like going out, soccer was my first sport, softball was my second sport, and then I started playing basketball when I was in third grade. So a lot of, uh, a lot of things happened and transpired, but I learned leadership, I learned communication, I learned how to work with people different types of people that had different ideas that weren't, that didn't look like me and weren't like me by any means that may, you know, may or may not have worked as hard as me, but I learned how to be a leader and, uh, and be around people that also led. That's you, so well put. And I would say too, that for me, I grew up in Chicago being a basketball player. I watched you win the state championship at Stevenson. Woo! It was, was it was Matucci your coach at that time? Yep, Coach Matouche. Matouche. Crazy, right? Yeah, he sent me an email Matush. last night. <laughs> I did not like playing against him. But you served as a role model uh, for me. And at the time, when I was coming up, the WNBA didn't exist. And then here we are all these years later, and you helped really pave the way for the future of, of not so many young girls, but, but the sport of basketball. Um, and as you said, sport is such a great vehicle to overcome um, and push boundaries when perceived boundaries in, in life. So kudos, kudos to you. And speaking of role model, I have to say, you know, this is, you were the first ESPN Sports Humanitarian of the Year winner. And we know community is really important for you, starting your own foundation, being a community figure, even within your, uh, your local business. And ESPN is currently running a one team campaign which is to rally the sports community together during this time this very challenging time so my question to you is post covid can you talk about and tell us the significance of working together as one team when it comes to young people in the community well i think it's been really important even seeing how people are, are banding together now i mean think about even though you've seen the highs and the lows through COVID-19 and you've seen just, I mean, it's just, it's been tough, right? Yeah. But I think what I'm looking forward to is what does the new norm look like? What does it look like when we come out of this? And you just said it, like banding together, whether that's sports, because that's something that all of us are, were driven towards and we're used to seeing basketball games on TV and football games and baseball games and all, any type of games on TV. And it's really kind of taken, we've had to take a step back, right? And for me, family time has become even more critical than it's probably ever been, just being able to, to be around them and be around my nephews and my sister and my, my husband, of course, as much as I have. Um, but I think when we come out of this, you know, definitely what do we do to pull together and the community feel team sports in general, not to discount the individual sport, but team sports has already taught us how we have to work hard together and how we have to, you know, do the little things that make a big difference. And I think now what we've seen is restaurants and big companies and organizations, everybody bonded together. I can't say enough about my organization, Patriot Sports and Entertainment, all the great things that, you know, people in, in, our, in our company are doing. And, you know, we had a young man that started making masks. He, taught himself how to sew and, you know, literally started making masks and passing them out. But it's just like a story like that, that you, that inspire you to continue to be great. And then you know that you're going to make an impact. That's uh, wonderful examples of how, uh, even outside of sport, the importance of team and, and working as a team and teamwork. I think that we learned that so so poignantly and directly through sport, uh, but we really see it's so important to to be able to work as a collective. What would be one piece of advice for young folks when we talk about and focus on one team post all of this that you could give young folks listening in? I say, you know, same thing I would always say, set a goal, set a dream, and you can do and be whatever it is that you want to be. And, you know, just thinking through COVID and thinking through, you know, just from a professional athlete and somebody, you know, when I was a little kid and if I had gone through this, I think I would have been outside like nonstop <laughs> just because my goal was to be a professional basketball player. And there was, you know, even in that, at that point in time in seventh grade, there was nobody and nothing that was going to get in the way of me achieving that dream and that goal. And so get out, take a piece of paper, write down whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you aspire to be one day and use the time that you have now to get you prepared for that. And then of course, you got all summer long, right? You got the whole summer coming up. What are you gonna do to be better? 
by the time you get to school the next year. That's true. I'm going off script with a question here because you hit upon. Oh something. no. You, you, well, yeah. I think <laughs> I, this is going to be a, this is going to be a lob for you. You said something very poignant, and, and I'm going to ask you if this is probably and it has to be a, a, a key to all of your successes was goal setting. How much has that played a part of your life? Was that something that you consciously did, even as a young kid throughout your career? Is that something that you learned, or just you know you're always just setting that goal? Well, what did that play for you? I, I mean, I think it was it it became a part of me. You know, when I was young, seventh grade was the first time I really made my first goal, per se. Mm -hmm. But I think when I think before that, what was that I thing? always, to be in the NBA, like I wanted to be in the NBA. The WNBA, like you, it wasn't around. So that wasn't something that we could say, oh, you know what, one day I want to play in the WNBA, like the young, like our young people have today, right? So, you know, seventh grade made my first goal. But even to this day, I still have goal, and I mean, I was just we we have uh, meetings with our players every Wednesday, and I was just telling them I carry a journal with me everywhere I go, and every day when I wake up, you know, for the most part, it's all like color coded, so every day has a different color, so that I can go back and track what day is what. But I think it's just important to be able to write things down, and it's important to just keep your goals top of mind, and and what are you doing? You might have a a long term goal. And then you might have a short-term goal. So what is it that you can do right now that will prepare you for that long-term goal? That's great advice. I'm going to get some, some color-coded highlighters next to me because I think I, need to, I think I need to take my goal setting to the next level. I see some comments coming in. Favorite player, lots of parts. So if you're joining right now, we are going to be getting to live questions later. Start submitting them now. We're actually uh, compiling them. Our WSF team is compiling them. Um, and Tamika, I just – I want to stay on COVID for just one second because you did touch upon your team and the WNBA players and, um, you know, setting goals with them and working with them. WNBA season, you know, technically this would have been the season right now. The season would have been in session. It's been postponed. I can imagine, you know, it's a little bit frustrating and difficult and uncertain as we're all trying to navigate through this. So, um, you know, as front office of the Indiana Fever, what is the organization doing right now to keep morale up with the team, but then also keeping them primed and ready to start really at a moment's notice? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing to, to keep in mind is, you know, for the WNBA, our leadership, Kathy Engelbert has been absolutely, I, I just, she's amazing. Like, I can't say enough about her leadership and just how she, how she is, but, you know, the number one thing that everybody's been focused on is just the health and safety of our players, of our coaches, of our fans, you know, just in general. So when we get to that point, when we get that opportunity, everybody will be ready. But until we get there, you know, like I said, the biggest thing is just the health and safety of everybody. Yeah, that's the most important. Are there any internal discussions uh, amongst the league or even team as to return to play, say no fans? Um, you know, have there been discussions as to how the league could potentially return under safe protocol? Well, I mean, I think there's a whole lot of things that are being discussed right now, but you know, the ultimate thing is at the end of the day, and this is not just the W, the NBA, any professional sports league, at the end of the day, kind of going back to what I said, just like the health and safety of the players, of the coaches, of the fans, just making sure, you know, we're all, all states are going through phases. You know, our government and mayor here in Indianapolis have been phenomenal leaders even here and just making sure, like, as we phase into reopening, I mean, I'm sitting at Tease Me Cafe, but even for us, like, our phases of being able to reopen and, and get to a point where we can invite customers inside, it's going to take some time. So I am A-OK -okay with safety, A-OK -okay with health, and just making sure we do the right thing in due time. Here, here. And I know a lot of people are working on this, including Kathy um, and, and leaders and organizations and NGBs and, you know, all over the world and, and country right now just trying to figure out the best way to get back. And we will get back and we will get there. We will. Um, we will. And uh, really, again, appreciate you taking the time to help inspire everybody along the way as we are all waiting to get back. Now, we do have some questions that I have from today's community partners. And before we get there, I will be remiss if I don't say congratulations to you on not one, but two Hall of Fame inductions this year. 
I'm giving you a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Out. You can't tune this one out. It's in front of your face. Thank um, you. I appreciate it. What? You, just really quickly, what was your reaction when you found out, and what's the significance of, of these honors to you? My gosh, what a what an honor, you know, like truly a blessing. Uh, I'm just so thankful. I'm grateful, you know, obviously, or well, not obviously, but for me, like being a Hall of Famer wasn't something that I dreamed about. I mean, being in the NBA was something I dreamed about. Being in the Olympics was something I dreamed about. Playing with the players that I mentioned earlier and just like all the amazing players that I had the opportunity to play with and against, uh, that was the thing that I dreamed about. So like the Hall of Fame just, this is like the highest of the highest levels, right? And to be amongst an amazing class, when I think about the Women's Sports Foundation, or Women, Women Basketball Hall of Fame, Women's Sports Foundation, of course, but Women <laughs> Basketball <laughs> Hall of Fame. I mean, <laughs> it's truly, you know, like Pat. I think about Pat. I think about, you know, the first time I had the opportunity to go and see Pat get inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame and just how much it meant to me being there for her and being underneath her helm. And then, of course, the Naismith, Think about all the great players that have come before me. Obviously, the, the guys that are going that I'm going into uh, this class, Kobe and KG and Tim Duncan and the coaching staff and Kim Mulkey. Uh, you know, love love Kim. So just I'm just honored. Yeah, it's it's an incredible class. Um, well, for both Hall of Fames um, and uh, tremendous achievement uh, to be inducted into one Hall of Fame is a tremendous achievement to be inducted into two Hall of Fames is extraordinary in, in the same year. So um, uh, kudos to you. Blessing. Yeah, you're, you're amazing. And so on that note of inspiration, we are going to turn to our feature community partner questions and viewers at home. Keep submitting questions if you have questions for Tamika. We will get to them right after this. Today's, and I'm just going to look at my notes here. They're actually a wonderful organization who I know personally and dearly. Today's featured Sports for Life community partner is the Hispanic Coalition. This is a youth girls basketball organization. I see a lot of hearts because they're watching right now. That has been around for many years. They strive to build, enhance, and shape the lives of young girls. This program supports all girls to gain self-confidence and skills both on and off the court. Um, they also, Tamika, this is a fun fact, they were uh, a number of the girls from the Hispanic Coalition attended Julie Foudy's leadership camp last year. Yay! For a basketball clinic. That so was awesome. We had so much and fun. They have more questions for you, okay? More? I mean, we spent yeah. almost a whole week together, but this is cool. Well, they've got a lot of questions. So, this first question is actually this comes from Coach Margaret Haywood, who has coached for over 20 years the Hispanic Coalition. She has been a pillar within the community. And her question is, is really great. It's this new way of life has really impacted young girls all over the place. How, as coaches, do we get girls to not lose focus and remain committed to working out on their own so when they return, they haven't fallen behind? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's a, a good question. Um, thank coach. And I definitely feel like in this time, and every coach is struggling with that. I mean, I've talked mm -hmm. to, you know, some of the college players and college teams I've talked to, to professional teams, and even with our team, you know, it is hard. But I think it's really focusing on what is their goal and what is their dream. Not everybody wants to be a professional basketball player or a professional athlete. So whatever it is that they're focused on, but as we're you know, looking at specifically to sport, I think it's really what are some fun ways that you can engage the players. And, you know, you do get, even as a professional athlete, you get tired of just dribbling with your left hand and just dribbling with your right hand and just working on crossover. But, you know, one thing that I always stress with the, the teams that I play or you know, the, the players that I get a chance to work with through the camp is – you're working on this stuff in second, third, fourth, fifth grade. These are the same things that we're working on as professional athletes. And so really being able to focus on if this is really a dream and a goal of yours, then you got to you gotta work every single day because there's always somebody working harder than you. There you go. That'll get them motivated. There you go. I love that one. <laughs> Instill the fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's true. There is always someone. You, you always got to outwork, outwork that that person. This next question comes from Rod and Sophia. They are a father-daughter team. I love them. They are like the ultimate hashtag girl dad. 
And I love it. Yes, I, I think I see Sophia live right now. So I'm, I'm getting ready for some, some hearts coming up. Um, this question is really interesting. Do you think that this pandemic will affect the salaries of female professional athletes? I think that that's a great question. Thanks a lot, Sophia. I think that the first thing is, you know, no, I don't. Um, I think with all sports leagues right now, they're trying to figure out what will be the new norm and what will be the new way. Um, the CBA that was passed for the WNBA earlier this year is, is a huge start for us. I know, you know, women's soccer is still kind of going going through the fight with that. I mean, there's just a lot of there's a lot of things, a lot of achievements that we've already had and that we've made. And I think we're able during this pandemic to to see what will life look like after and continue to build on the building blocks that have been set before us. But we're not going back. We're only going up. Yes, that's true. Um, this next question comes from Whitney, age 10. And when you were a kid, what gave you confidence when playing basketball? When I was a kid, Whitney, I would have to say just practice. I mean, I was outside, even if I didn't have access to a basketball hoop, I would dribbling the air out of the ball as much as I could. I mean, that basketball went everywhere with me. And I mean, mom and dad, we had to go to some appearances. I always had my basketball and never really didn't really look at like downtime at downtime. It was a time where I was like, okay, like I'll just go and find a little place, a little area. I don't need much room a little area to, to dribble. And I think the the better I got with ball handling, the better I got obviously with shooting and all of the passing and all the other skill sets, the better I got, the more confidence I had. Are you, are you a believer that practice makes perfect? Oh, perfect practice, not any type of practice. Yeah, I am a believer, and Pat was big on that. She's like, okay, you guys go out there and just practice. If you want to practice sloppy, you're going to play, you're going to play sloppy. I'm like, okay, Pat, <laughs> perfect practice. And of yeah. course, you know, when perfection is, yeah, that's, that's broad, but, you know, as close as you can get to being tip top, that, that was important. Practice how you play. Yep. Love that. You're dropping some, you're dropping some great wisdom here right now. Uh, I hope somebody's taking it. It's just, it's just your, con I mean, you know, like our conversation, you're just, you're just bringing it out. Maybe I'm getting it from you. I don't know. Shy, listen, just two <laughs> shy town ballers hanging out here. It's, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just happy we don't have to play horse or anything. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> yeah. I won't be doing that again. <laughs> Game over when we're on a basketball court. <laughs> we can play um, a different sport. Maybe we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. I'll, I'll run. I'm, I'm so how about run. this, right? So we have a campaign with the fever going on. It's called hashtag this is balling. And if you can go to, you know, Indiana Fever, I've posted a couple of videos on my personal site as well. But you just, it doesn't have to be basketball. You just, like, take a trick shot, take a shot. You know, we got people shooting into a wastebasket. We got soccer players, you know, volleying the ball and then kicking it into the goal. I mean, there's a lot of cool things. So I'm challenging you, all right? I'm challenging you. This oh, you is you and I. It. Hey, I'm challenging you. We're going to do a This Is Balling campaign. I want to make sure you tag us. Tag me so that I can make sure I'm going to, whatever you send me, I'm, I'm going to, you know, it's going to be a little competition. We're just going to have some fun. All right, Tamika, game on. <laughs> game phase two. Oh, man. Yeah, game on. I'm taking these off. On that note, <laughs> challenging, I'm throwing this challenge back to you because we're going to move on to this fitness challenge. You've been so generous with your time. You have dropped so much wisdom. So we have viewers at home. Most of us are working out in our homes right now. I am in a, in a New York City apartment, so I'm doing my best to stay fit. What types of exercises are you going to throw our way this today that we can do to stay fit during this time? Are you actually like asking me to like get up and do something or I could just tell you what I've been oh, doing? Okay, yeah. If you want to coach me through it, I have no problem looking looking like a... Uh, oh, right here we go. All right, so let's keep it simple because normally I would get on my bike ride and then after my bike ride, I would hang out in the in the backyard and, and get some shots up. But how about, let's just do some simple sit-ups. We'll do some simple sit-ups with, uh, with some crunches. Okay. And I think you can handle that, this, right? This. And then when, you, when you're really good at it, then I want you to do one one-handed uh, push-up. Because that's what I would do. That's what I would do next. One handed push. Make me look good right now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do ten. We'll do ten setup. 
Okay, normal, just a normal sit-up? Yeah, normal sit-up. One. One. Two. two. <laughs> Let's just do five, because for sake of time. Oh, Three. <laughs> Four, five, okay. Now let's, now let's do some push up. Okay. How many? We'll do. Let's do five push up. Okay. Yeah. All the way down. One. Dang, you're good at this. Two, three, four, five. Now single hand push up. Oh my gosh. One hand. Okay. <laughs> I just really want to see if you can do it. I know you can. <laughs> I don't really do that at home. But it, it just seemed like it'd be fun. Like, you know what though? That's something to try. I'm gonna try it too when I get home. Just you know, we haven't mopped the floor here yet, so I just don't feel comfortable getting on the floor yet. Do you have any suggestions for one-handed push-ups? Um, you gotta get strong. <laughs> practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Tamika, you are the best. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us for a really special edition of Ask You're the awesome. Ambassador. Keep it up. <laughs> You're Keep awesome. I want to be like you when I grow up. Oh, wait, I'm older than you. <laughs> I want to be like you when I grow up, okay? <laughs> deal. That's just a deal. We'll, we'll, we'll aspire to be each other. Okay, and hashtag this is balling, right? So I, I can't wait to see your video. We'll, we'll send it your way. I like Thanks, it. Thanks, Tamika. Thanks for having me.